sweet to him, hallelujah. How many of you really love the Lord on tonight? How many of you appreciate the sacrifice of life, hallelujah? Why don't you turn to somebody and say, I really appreciate the Lord being in my life. I appreciate his consistency. I appreciate how he takes care of me. I appreciate how he looks after me. I appreciate how I can trust in him and never have any doubt. I appreciate that he's going to be everything that he has promised to be. I appreciate that he's my blessed savior. I appreciate that he's my rock. I appreciate that I can lean on him. I appreciate that I can trust him. Jesus, we just want to sing this love song to the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, clap your hands like this in the sanctuary. Oh, oh, yeah. I really love you, Lord. Oh, yes, I do, yes, I do, yes, I do. Oh, oh, oh.
How many of y'all glad to be in the house of the Lord one more time? Amen. We thank God for you on tonight on this special Palm Sunday night. Amen. We are on the road to Resurrection Sunday. Amen. Amen. And on tonight, we have a special treat for you. I don't know if you can see behind me what is assembled in our choir. Amen. Amen. We have collected some of the finest men in GCT. Amen. Amen. So at this time, I want you to get on your feet and receive the greatest male chorus this side of heaven. That's none other than the GCT male chorus. Amen.
praise everybody. Why don't you stand on your feet? Come on, stand on your feet. Stand on your feet. Come on. Put those hands together. Come on, right here. We're going to make this a big choir. Look at somebody and say, neighbor, enter his gates with thanksgiving. Now, come on, put those hands together. Come on.
of hand praise everybody. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I don't know what you come to do, but I came to get God praise and I came to give him glory. Now this time, find somebody else and say, neighbor, I don't know what you come to do, but I came to give him praise and I came to give him glory. Come on, let's say amen for the bell course again. As it comes, give them another hand and praise for that.
Come on, give the Lord a hand. Praise everybody. tired and offering right quickly. Bless your hearts. Welcome to Palm Sunday night. Palm Sunday explosion. Lord have mercy. Come on, brother deacons, come on down, y'all. Uh, send me, I'll go to the deacon place. Amen. Praise God. Uh, God bless. Will you clap your hands for those beautiful people watching us online? I am so happy for you. Thank you for tuning in. Now, some of y'all down the street, you could go and get in the car and come on over here and join the rest of us because I believe that God's going to do something tonight special in the presence of his people. We've had good church all day today. That prophet is sharing, see why law preached up a storm. Wow, the storm was so good over here. I took the storm over to North Memphis. And oh, my, people were blessed and ministered to and healed. We're thankful for the move of the Spirit. And I was watching online. I saw the prophet up there in Jackson, Tennessee, ministering. Amen. You know, I'm his pastor while he's here. Ministering there in Jackson, Tennessee. Praise God for Unity Temple. And what an outpour of the Lord I saw there as well. Hallelujah. God is good, isn't he? Amen. Listen, I'm going to chat. Is that Stevenson Clark? What you talk? We got a celebrity singer in here tonight. You're going to get ready. Warm your voice up. Get ready. Do some. So whatever you got, do re me for so like to get ready because you're going to sing right after this, right before we put up the prophet tonight. Amen. He's going to have a big concert soon. I hope it's going to be here at Greater Community. I sent the message to Zach and Tiffany. They're going to work on that and make sure that happens uh, with uh, Dr. Stevenson Clark. Listen, we're going to sow and give. Are y'all happy? No, no, no. If you're happy and you know it, then your smile will surely show it. Are you happy? Turn to somebody and say, eyes happy, eyes happy. I'm so thankful for you being with us on tonight. Thank you. Give our male course a hand. Didn't they sing? Send me a go. Boy, y'all singing. Amen. 
Amen. I'm going to ask God to give you all some new songs. Amen. Praise God. They took us way back. Amen. To the slave ship and stuff. But uh, we're going we're gonna to come up. We're going to come up with some more stuff. Amen. God is good. Listen. Listen. But they up here. Don't they look good? Yeah. yeah good looking men. That's what. Good. Really. Good looking men. <laughs> That's right, brothers. You got to know it for yourself. If you need an reach your hand, someone's going to assist you. Those of you that are watching online, I love you with the love of Jesus Christ. And I'm so thankful that you're part of our visual audience. And, and you know, we've got e-members across the country as well from Carolina, New York, and Florida, and California, and other places that are supporting Atlanta, Atlanta, Georgia, supporting this ministry. And someone sent me, I sent it to you, Prophet. Uh, they heard you talking about uh, in New York how you you were attending and there, the church there in New York at, at uh, Stallworth. And they sent a picture of that church and said they used to attend there as well and wanted to give you greetings. Listen, we're going to sow. When you get ready to give, there are ways of giving. will be on the screen momentarily. And, of course, those cash app, Givelify, text to give, cash, checks, money, orders, however you want, however the Lord is speaking to you tonight. Amen. I want to challenge you to sow and to give as the Lord leads you tonight. How many know that where your treasures are, there will your heart be also? Do you believe the scriptures concerning giving? The Bible talks more about giving than it does the Holy Ghost. Amen. My dad used to say, you don't know how to live until you learn how to give. And giving is essential to our walk with God. Amen. God so loved the world that he did something. What did he do? He gave. Amen. Amen. When you love, it causes you to give. Ladies, if a brother tells you he loves you, he's in love with you, don't ever give you nothing, he lying to you. Because love makes you give. Amen. Tell your neighbor, love will make you give up something. I, I, amen. I'm, I'm talking about the right stuff. I'm talking about the right thing. Now, give holiness. Amen. Give good gifts. Amen. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. See, lust takes, but love gives. Is that right? Say that lust takes, but love gives. That's why I'm a giver. I have the gift of giving. Amen. And whenever God gives you the gift of giving, he gives you a greater measure of operation in that gift. So he had to supply that gift. He has to equip that gift. He has to give that gift, those essentials, in order that it might operate. If you have the gift of prophecy, he's got to give you, he's got to speak to you. Amen. Because the prophetic is to say what God already said. The prophet doesn't create it, doesn't come up with it. He's not the originator. The prophet only says what God already said. Amen. And so thank God that when I give, it's because God's already given to me. So I can give back good measure, press down, shake it together, run it over, because that's how it's coming to me. I need you to wave at three people. Tell them I'm already blessed because I'm in the presence of the Lord. And oh, my coming is not in vain. I done got happy up here. Lord Jesus. Amen, somebody. David said I was what? Lord, have mercy. Y'all ain't saying it right. David said I was what? I was glad when they said what? Let's go to church on Palm Sunday night. He said, I was glad. I wish somebody get glad tonight. I wish somebody just get glad tonight. Come on, get glad tonight. Sometimes you got to have joy to get what God's got for you. The Bible said, with joy shall withdraw water out of the wells of salvation. I need you to tell three people, I'm going to use some joy tonight to get what God's got for me. Tell them I'm lying to jump up right now and shout hallelujah because God, oh God, had been good to me. I need you to shake somebody and say, can't nobody do me like Jesus. I said again, I feel it, prophet. Can't nobody do me like Jesus. How you know it? Tell somebody how you know it. Tell him because he's already done it. I'm already blessed. I dare you to get up and jump three times. Jump, jump three times. I'm not shaking. Well, here's the good news. When you jump, I want you to know some chains just fell off. Some chains just fell off. My God, God's getting ready to release something to you. Tell three people my breakthrough is in this room right now. Come on and tell them my breakthrough. Ah, my breakthrough is in this room. I dare you.
you to walk around and point at five people and say, breakthrough, 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 breakthrough. Hallelujah. Come on, give him praise, somebody. Come on, give him praise, somebody. Oh, yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah, ba 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 Hallelujah. My God, my God. I tell you what I want you to do. I want you to watch out. There, oh, there we go. There we go. There we go. He's real. He's real. My God. Hallelujah. I just heard something, prophet. I just heard something. I just heard something. I just heard something. I heard the Holy Ghost say, help is in the room. Tell somebody, help is in the room. Now, when you go to the country, they don't say help. They say hope. I need you to look at somebody and say, hope, 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 hope. My God, hope is in the room. I said hope is in the room. Whatever God wants for you is getting ready to happen. Now, you got your offering. Lift your offering in by faith. You got your phones, you're giving through your phones, however you're giving. I want you to bring that offer and run it up here. When you put it in the plate, even on your phones, if you got it on your phones, run and wave by the deacon and say, hope. Come on right now. Hurry up. Come on. Come on. Come on. Bring that seed right
I dare you make some noise that will make the devil mad. <laughs> I said, make some noise that'll make the devil mad. <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 Clap your hands. <laughs> and the Lord said it would be just like that. It would be just like that. <laughs> what you want from God, what you've been believing God for. Now, when I say this, you better, you got to. Not yet, because I don't know who back there shouting, but don't let her shout by herself. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Don't you let us shout. Somebody sitting there judging your holler. But I dare you look at somebody, tell them, judge all you want. You wasn't there. You wasn't there when he wiped your tears from your eyes. Judge. Judge me all you want. You wasn't there when I was on my sick bed. Judge me all you want. You were not there. And I preach it how I feel it. When tears was running down my face, judge me all you want. You are not there. When they walked out on me, I got a right to pray. to lift your hand and don't be ashamed. Lift your hand up and lean back and say, I got a right to praise the Lord. Have it been good to you? Have it been good to you? Have it brought you out of it? Y'all ain't gonna help me through here. Have it been wonderful? Look at your neighbor. Since I'm out here, I might as well step. Look at your neighbor. Said neighbor, I want you to know now, one of the things that have kept me along my journey, it was not what my last name was. Y'all ain't hollering at me. It was not my education. Y'all ain't loud enough. It was not my pedigree. It was not my school. It was not the church home I was a member of. But can I tell you? Can I tell you? Can I tell you what it kept me when the Lord laid his hand on my mind? Some kind of way. When I lost my house, when I lost my car, he allowed me to keep, keep my mind. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, you got to be the kind of Christian that if everything leaves, tell the Lord, allow me to keep my mind. Because if I keep my mind, yeah, everything else will always come back. Hop pop your neighbor and say, neighbor, whatever leaves, make sure your mind remains. Oh, that's the word by itself. I say, look at him and tell him, whatever leaves, make sure your mind remains. Whatever leaves, make sure your mind remain. I said, high five somebody. Don't get funny. High five somebody. Say, neighbor, how is your mind? Don't you let the devil steal your joy. Don't you let the devil disrupt your peace. Keep your mind. Keep your mind. Keep your mind. Walk up to somebody and say, stay it on Jesus. And the louder you get, 
the quick of God gonna protect your mind. Somebody say, how's your mind? Oh. How's your mind? You've lost some stuff. Hey, along the way. Hey, but God told me to tell you, you ain't going to lose your mind. Hold me out. Shut up behind you. You ain't going to lose your mind. I feel this thing. The devil been fighting you. There he is. The devil. The devil. The devil. This morning. I was in, y'all sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down. This morning I was in Jackson, Tennessee. We had a time. One of the things that was birthed in the realm of the administration was God was going to keep our mind. Open your mouth. You ain't got to yell it. Just say it. God, keep my mind. No, that person that confronted, make sure your neighbor is just as loud as you. Everybody say, God. God. I'm not attached to some stuff that other people Karen is attached to. Because in this hour, God, he's putting a demand. Not just your holiness. He's putting a demand your pursuit. I want to talk to you tonight just for a few moments about your Christian pursuit. I want to talk to you just for a few moments about look at your neighbor, touch him and say your Christian pursuit. Every, every single one of us is in here right now and believe it or not Though we're talking about your Christian pursuit, I need to warn you that all of you are being pursued. <laughs> Y'all ain't loud enough. We believe it or not, we are. We come to church pursuing a deeper understanding of the Holy Scriptures. We come to church, can I preach it how I feel it? <laughs> Trying to believe that God can give us a greater revelation. We come to church, some of us broken, some of us divided in our spirit. Some of us depressed because life has taken its course. I want somebody not to be egotistical, but you want to be real about your testimony. You are somebody in here uh, that can admit that you have a uh, thought in life. Y'all ain't talking to me. You, you have not just thought in life. You've had to fight. So for some of y'all, you've had to fight your family. <laughs> because of the law of disloyalty. Y'all ain't talking to me. For some of you, you trying to live, live, I feel like preaching. You trying to live holy. You're trying to live right. But the truth of the matter is, every time you was trying to do good, evil, come on here. And I want to tell you, evil have a way of tracking down those that's trying to live for God. That's why the Bible, can I preach it how I feel it? That's why the Bible tells us to whom much is, much is required. And I came to confirm to you that a lot of you are more anointed than you know. You are more powerful than you give yourself credit. 
the reason I know you're powerful, the reason, can I preach it how I feel it? Tell me to preach. The reason I know you're powerful is because you survived what most people died trying to conquer. That's how I know the hand of God is on your life. The reason I know the hand of God, somebody tell me to preach right now. The reason I know the hand of God is on your life is because the enemy allowed you to go through things that never had demise in its forecast. In other words, y'all done been through some stuff. You've had to climb some hills. You've had to get over some more hills. But one thing that have never changed is God, watch this, pursuing you. One thing that have never changed, no matter how bad your last marriage was, talk back to me, no matter how bad that marriage made you feel, no matter how bad that last relationship made you feel, God always have pursued you because it's kind of funny. God seeing us what other people will never admit they see. Oh, oh, no, 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 no. I said, God sees, Bishop, God sees in us what other people are not willing to admit they see. Here's the revelation. They see it. They just ain't willing to admit they see it. People knew you were a threat before you became a big D. People knew you were anointed before you accepted your calling. Talk back to me before I throw my mic at you. People, some people have a difficult time seeing you surpass them. They have a difficult time coming to grips with the fact that no matter how much truth they know about you, the truth of what they know will never define what God has laid on your life. <laughs> I want to talk to somebody that has a genuine testimony. You got a story. And the truth of the matter is some of y'all ain't proud of your story. Who going to be, who, who going to be, who going to tell the truth? You ain't proud of the stuff. Some of y'all don't claim the people you used to date. Just look at your neighbor and say, show you're right. Because they are a testament of the season I was in. And some people, some people, sister B, refuse to see you the way God sees you. Y'all better talk back to me, I promise you. I'm going to throw this mic in a few seconds. I said some people refuse to see you the way God sees you. And so the way that God reminds your haters of who you are by elevating you in their face. <laughs> He'll elevate you in the face. There's some people that they can't believe. He's a licensed evangelist, missionary in the church of God of Christ. How did that come about? <laughs> Her mama must have talked to the bishop. She got favor. Sometimes. Some, watch this. Sometimes what you go through was, watch this, was never intended to hinder you. Though it was a hindrance. Oh. Yeah. 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 Am I making any sense? Sometimes what you go through is never meant to hinder your progression, your process. God plants teachable moments in our lives in the form of hurdles. In, in, in the form of obstacles, in the form, 
I like that. Oh, yeah, you keep saying it like that. You're going to make me preach. And, 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 <laughs> in the form of opposition and dilemmas. And I want to talk to somebody that's sitting here, and you are currently in the midst of a dilemma. Y'all ain't talking to me. Come on, who's going to tell the truth? You are currently in the midst of a dilemma. You're, you're, you're currently in the midst of a hurdle. You, you are currently. Your present warfare is a sign that God is up to something on your journey of pursuing Christ. Because God has never stopped pursuing you. I don't, I don't care what you've done. I don't know who I'm talking to in here. I don't care how old you are. Elevation don't come from man. It comes from the Lord. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, that's just what my haters need to understand. <laughs> I, no, no, that, that neighbor ain't, ain't acting right. Fine, somebody else say, that's just what my hater need to understand. Is that when God appoints a time for you... And, and I want to say this, and I hope you holler back at me. I said, when God appoints a time, and your time is right around the corner. Y'all, let me talk to y'all. Maybe y'all will get it. I said, when God appoints a time, and your time is right around the corner. Maybe this is going to make y'all holler. Not only is your time right around the corner, God said, you ain't even got to adjust your position. Can I preach it how I feel it? He said, oh, shucks. He said, you ain't even got to, oh, <laughs> you ain't even got to adjust your position because your father is getting ready to ride on a donkey into your situation. And that's just what you need while you're going through your press. I can look at your neighbor and say, I get it now. I'm going to let them talk about me because the more they talk about me, the more I expect God to ride in my situation. I'm going to let them lie on me. Because at any given moment, there's about to be a triumphal entry. I'm going to let him speak all matter. Can I preach it how I feel it? Of evil concerning me. Because one thing for sure and two for certain, when the Lord get here, <laughs> when Jesus make it to the city, can I be, I feel like preaching, can I be honest with y'all? That's why I don't mind people talking about me. Y'all ain't loud enough. I don't mind people doing me wrong. I know what they're saying about me. Come on here. I just want to tell them the reason I ain't clapped back, the reason I ain't utter a word, because I'm waiting on a triumphant entry. And I stopped back here to Memphis to tell somebody, you ain't going to have to fight back. You ain't going to have to defend yourself because when the hand is on your life, the hand defends you. When the hand of God is on your life, the testimony of what you've overcome defends you. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, on this Palm Sunday, I came to declare that I've been waiting on this entry into my situation. I've been waiting on this entry into my problem. Look at your neighbor. Tell your neighbor to get up. Say, neighbor, get up. The king is almost in the city. Get up. Make some noise. Shout about it. Scream about it. You got to imagine that on that day, all the people, they came out of their houses. They came out of their businesses. And they 
was looking for a problem solver. They came out of their towns and they were looking for a problem solver. I came to tell you, that's just like you. Whatever you may be carrying, whatever you may be dealing with, you ain't got to let it down. You ain't got to hide it. You ain't got to cover it up. Preach to your neighbor. Say, neighbor, I came to tell you, whatever you're carrying, don't cover it up. Whatever you're carrying, don't hide it. Why? Because the king, I'm expecting the king to show up. At any given moment, that's why I didn't leave. That's why I stayed the course. Because God inhabits the praises of his people. I stop right here to tell you what you've been holding. God says that when you see me, give it to me. He says, cast your cares. Can I preach upon me? Now you got to know, casting of your cares can happen at all times. It can't happen with just anybody. You got to cast when you know that there's a God in your vicinity that can carry what you cast. So here's the revelation. God says, you're not allowed to leave here with what you got holding you back. You're not allowed to leave here with what you've been carrying. I said, you ain't allowed to leave here with it because God come into the city and if you praise him he'll take your burden he'll take your situation your praise attracts his provision your praise attracts his provision God I said God told me to let you know that is your remedy. That is your word. What is it, prophet? You don't have to bear it alone when you got a God that's riding on a donkey and is coming to a city near you. And he's coming looking for you to give it up. He's coming. Lean on your neighbor. I said, lean on him. Say, neighbor, I don't want to know your business. But can I ask you, what are you willing to give up to your father? What are you willing to let go of it? And you go home with the same mind. Don't you let I'm preaching better than y'all screaming. Don't let the king come here tonight and you'll find in weariness. Take that weariness. Give it to God. Take that brokenness. I said, take that brokenness. Give it to God. He knows about it. He's a very present help in your time of trouble. Won't he do it? Won't he pick you up? When he's in the city, you shall prophesy. When he's in the city, you will testify that only a God like this could have done. Three people and tell them only a God like 
Deportes. I said, get out of your seat. Run up to your neighbor and say, only a God.
and you better go crazy. When I count to three, I dare you put a hose out on your front tongue. And while you scream and hollering and running, you need to understand the revelation. You no longer own what's been trying to destroy your life. One, two, three, shout up! some absolutely stupid church right now. Wasn't that powerful? Hosanna means God. I, I said Hosanna means what? Because he, he didn't just enter the city, he entered into your life. His, his entrance is his interest in taking your problem. I'm going to say it again so you get it. His entrance is his interest in taking somebody make it personal say my problem. Some of you have been carrying this for so long Look at me now and act like you believe it. Don't get deep before I start calling your problems out. Some of you got skeletons in your closet. And you refuse to praise God when his entrance is his interest in taking on your problem. Why do we do church? And we come in here with stuff that never leaves when we leave. Aren't you tired? Bag lady. Carrying all them bags like that. Aren't you tired of carrying? this baggage y'all ain't loud enough let me ask again because I want to ask I want to ask this to people that desire for the weight to be released off their shoulders aren't you tired of carrying this baggage on this Palm Sunday I'm saying it not because I ain't got nothing else to say I'm saying it for redundancy so you get it his entrance is his interest in taking on your problem. That's why he says cast your cares upon him because he cares for you. He have interest in your happiness. Look at me brothers. He has interest in your peace. He has interest in your freedom. He has interest in your happiness. Some of you make it look like the only way you can be happy in your life is when you do things to make you happy. God can cause happiness by removing some stuff that you've been holding on to, that you ain't been able to shake. So when we shout, look at me. The Lord says, it's about to get crazy in here because he says, son, I'm about to allow heaven to hit earth. Y'all still ain't loud enough. See, y'all done heard so many cliches that... When someone is pushing you into your breakthrough, it no longer has salt. There was a man, and I told this story years ago. There was a man, and we about to have some church. Y'all clap your hands for my musician, Brother Jay. Rhythm, he just flew in. You got to take these folk in, 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 in parts. You can't just throw them stems in there like that, scaring these people, act like we finna turn into a club. Shame on you. Watch this. 
The Lord says, everybody sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down real quick. I got to get this to you. I'm done, I'm done, I'm done. The Lord says that there's some stuff you've been carrying. Look at me. And you've been carrying this stuff because the stuff you're carrying feels a part of your life. Some of you don't even know what baggage is. Some of you don't even know what your baggage look like. Because you've been carrying this baggage for so long that you and it has become one. You are naturally toxic. Because you've never been delivered from the spirit of that last toxic situation. So even your response to newness is based on oldness. Some of y'all, God is trying to get you into a new season. But the reason, it's not that you're not in a new season, but the reason you're reliving the things you thought God was bringing you out of is because you brought the old you into the new situation. It's not that God is not blessing you. It's not that God is not taking you to the next level. It's not that God is not, glory to God, elevating. It's not that God don't have you on his mind. But you need to understand that if you don't do deep work, y'all doing a whole lot of prayer, and the Bible says man shall always pray. Y'all doing a lot of prayer, but ain't nobody doing deep work. Because what's wrong with you, you don't think it's wrong. You don't even know it's wrong. Say amen to me. You don't even know it's wrong. You don't even know it's wrong. You can't see that it's wrong. And so now, your blessing looks like your problem. What do you do when you serve in God? And because you have not been delivered from your baggage, God gives you another chance in a new season with a new person, with a new car, with a new house. And your blessing is disguised as your problem. Some of y'all put the mask on your blessing. I said, some of y'all put the mask on your blessing. Some of you have shaped how your blessing looked because you never took your hands off of it. So you still wrestle with what God wants you to delete. This ain't just for the young people, it's for everybody. All y'all. Somebody say, all y'all. God is saying, God is saying, I, I'm trying to get y'all to understand that on this Palm Sunday, he's entering the city in an humble way. He ain't loud about how he's coming. He's intentional about how he's coming. He's coming into your life. And some of you have been waiting on God to heal you. Waiting on God to deliver you. You've been waiting. But how do you handle God when he actually shows up? He, he shows up. He, he, he shows up on a donkey. He enters your life. He, I, I'm, I'm making this plain. He enters your situation. And you don't know how to accept him. Because, watch this. His entrance is his interest in taking your problem. How, how can you embrace your next level, your next season, in the presence of a problem solver and you refuse to give him the problem? The, the, the bishop, the issue, I'm done. The issue is, 
not the lack of the anointing that rests in the church. I'm going to mess y'all up. A lot of the issue is not the lack of good preaching. It's not the lack of inviting God into a space. It's not the lack of inviting the healer. You know what y'all be saying. The way maker. Way make miracle. Promise. It, no, no. We ain't lacking the appearance of these things. We're lacking the giving up of what is attached to the old us. Okay, to the last level we was on. So when the healer appears, the healer comes to heal. But don't get mad at him if you leave the same way. When he came to heal and you didn't give him nothing to heal. Because he came looking for you but you always giving him your representative. Because of what people think about you. So you can't give it up. Well, hold on. At least not in front of them. Okay. Okay, y'all don't like me. Y'all don't like me. I can't be vulnerable at least in front of them. Because they think I got it all together. Don't you allow they thinking to cause you to miss God's blessings. Let me not, God, God has a way of whispering in our ears and telling us, dance right now. And, and, and watch it, and that dance right now was the moment he was going to heal your body. But because praising ain't always popular in the eyes of your peers, you quench the Holy Ghost. So in essence, you missed uh, your opportunity to walk in divine healing. How many times you quenched the Holy Ghost? Do you not know every time you quenched it, you watch this, you forfeited what he was trying to do in your life. Somebody say that's heavy. Come on, you, you, every time you quench, God tell you to do something. God told some of y'all to sow into the bishop. And you said, nah, nah that, I must be hungry. That, that ain't God. That must be something. Must have had too much salt today. Had much, too much sugar. Mess it. Yeah, give him, give him another chance. Because <laughs> God was, and God, He operates. Y'all, it's about to get crazy here. He operates in giving us. Watch this. In a lotted amount of time, everything. Watch this. Everything, y'all. Everybody, point at me. Listen to me. Everything that's going wrong in your life has, I prophetically speak has an allotted amount of time that it has to disintegrate. Okay, okay, y'all will catch it later. Every, ah, everything in your life that is going wrong, listen to me, has an expiration date. Are you listening to me? She said, yes. <laughs> Y'all know I start hitting folk and everything. That's when I feel it. Every, I, ain't, I ain't gonna hit you, sister. Her eyes opened up. E everything, listen, everything in your life, I need you to know this by way of the spirit. Everything, just in case the devil tries to convince you that what you're dealing with, what's going on, supposed to last. I do believe what the songwriter said, trouble don't last. Y'all gotta say it like you got power. Somebody say, trouble don't last. So watch this. You got, as a Christian, you got to start to realize that all of your troubles got an expiration date. Okay? Everything that's hindering you got an expiration date. Everything that is battling you in your marriage has an expiration date. You don't believe it? Let, let, let me tell you why. If, 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 if. If the Holy Scripture tells us, tells us 
but he won't put more on us than we can. Wait a minute. Why, why are you complaining talking about the stuff you're going through is unbearable? Do you not know every time you submit to that notion, you're saying that God is a liar? Why, why are you tripping talking about this is just too hard to bear? I just don't know how I'm going to get through this. This just would never change. When the Holy Scripture said God is not a God that he should lie. Neither is he the son of man that he got to repent. God ain't going to repent about what he allowed to exist in your life. And if God allowed it to exist in your life, he's allowing you to go through the process of elevating. This was never to kill you. This was never Watch this to pick on you. This was never supposed to happen to make you feel bad. This only was supposed to happen so that you can mature in your faith. Anything, watch this, anything you go through that you survive was supposed to be a lesson. Y'all ain't loud enough. I'm going to say this one more time. Anything you go through, I need y'all to shout anything. Matter of fact, say everything. Come on, say it loud. Everything I go through that I survive is supposed to be a lesson. Look at your neighbor and say, stop tripping. I'm going to take you on the road with me. I like the way I, like, I need you around. When I preach, I need you to just do that. Anything, somebody say everything you go through that you survive is intended to be a lesson. Because how can God, I'm done, how can, we're about to dance and shout and everything. How can God, look at me, how can God prepare you for your next anointing? Okay, how, listen. How can God prepare you for the next level of grace on your life? Do you not know everything you're dealing with is preparation? You hear me? Look at me. Everything you're dealing with is preparation. He's preparing you. Thank you. He's preparing you for something. Watch this. That's greater than what's been. Jesus. I said, he's, listen, listen to me. He's preparing you for something that's greater than what's been. And in order for me to operate on another level of distinction, another level of the anointing, I must conquer the level of anointing that I'm on currently. And, and one of the ways God elevates you from the last level is by making sure that the baggage you carry on the last level, you don't carry that same baggage on your next level. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hold on. And just for some people that want to be slow tonight, baggage can be in the form of habits. Oh. Can I talk it how I feel it? Our next level require new habits. And the deletion of old habits. There, 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 is, there, is, there is some habits that have become your baggage. Am I making any sense? Some of y'all, these habits have become a part of your regiment. It is equivalent to drinking water. That's how strong this habit is. That's how strong this problem is. This, 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 these habits uh, are equivalent to waking up in the morning. That's how unified this problem is. 
And God wants you to conquer your habits. The way we conquer our habits, Bishop, there is a word, write this down, there's a word called trauma bonding. And trauma bonding. Y'all heard me? All right. Trauma bonding, look at me, is when something in your past re represent itself in your present. And in your present, you relive the feeling, the place, the thoughts you once thought you got over. But you didn't get over it. It was just lying dormant, gathering dust of disuse. There's some stuff that is holding you back from your next level. And why don't you ever notice it? Because it's gathering dust of disuse. There, 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 there are some ways about you that is keeping you from the promise. Why don't you ever deal with it? Because it, because it sits, it sits, uh, you ready? It sits dormant. It sits un, without movement, and, and it waits. It waits until an opportune time right before you get ready and, and establish dominion in your next season, and it shows its head up. Some of y'all know you got over that joker. Until God finally shows you somebody that's supposed that gonna do you right, that joke will come out of nowhere, comes out of obscurity. You might as well clap. Come on, ain't it? Come on, clap. This comes out of obs I ain't lying. Comes out of obs out of obscurity, out of nowhere. Been five years. Ten. I ain't said nothing to him. He ain't said nothing to me. I ain't said nothing to her. She ain't said, come on here. And right before God, right when God is revealing to you who, who your, you know, your, your, your person is, the spirit of familiarity comes to stunt your progression. Because one of the biggest battles in today's church is not promiscuousness. It's familiarity. Some of y'all familiarity going to send you to hell. Because it's easy to fall into sin with what's familiar. Oh, y'all ain't talking to me. Y'all don't. You said, prophet, how did you get all the way here? Because if God on this Palm Sunday is telling us that uh, he's riding on a donkey, he's entering your, your city. He's entering your situation. And he's, and he's not entering your situation looking. Watch this. He's not entering your situation looking to just walk past you. He's entering your situation looking to take on your problems. I want to prophesy, and I'm done, y'all. I promise I'm done. Come on. Come grab this, my brother. Please, I'm done. I'm done. I'm a, I got an early flight. I, I want to tell you. I want to tell you. He's, 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 he's entering your life to take on whatever you've been carrying. And that's, that is the corporate prophecy. And I know somebody came here, well, we, we, we want you to, you know, you know we want you to do prophet. <laughs> somebody talking about speak, Lord. Yeah. Watch this. Watch this. But let me tell you what's greater than calling out a name. What, what, what I'm giving you right now is really powerful. Because, listen, I'm serious. What I'm giving you right now is really powerful, Karen. You know what I'm saying? Because what I'm telling y'all, yeah, yeah. What I'm telling y'all is that you don't have to leave here. Not just the way you came you ain't got to leave here with what you came with. It's one thing, it's one thing to leave different, because leaving different can mean I left with a different mindset. But what happens when you don't just leave different? You, you leave lighter. 
I don't just want to be different. I need some stuff to literally leave my life. Come here, come here, y'all. Please bring your spirit in. I don't just, I don't just want to leave Kitina none of my sin. I don't just want to leave different. I don't want to leave different. I've been hearing that. Sister Bab, I've been hearing that for years. I've been hearing that. I've been hearing that for years, leaving different. But, but I, 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 I left, yes, with a different mindset, but I still had the problem. I still, come on, who gonna, who gonna tell the truth? Who gonna tell the truth? You've came to church before, and, and though you left inspired and encouraged, you still left with the same. Oh, y'all don't want to tell the truth. That's the problem. The church have made y'all afraid of leaving what you came here with on the altar. And so prophecy, watch this, uh, Sister, Sister Bryson, pro prophecy cannot cover up the fact that I'm carrying something. Because after you get done calling out a name, after you get done, glory to God, calling somebody address out, I still leave with stuff yeah. that hurts me after the momentum subsides after Come on here. The theatrics comes to an end after. Come on here. The praise is no longer at a momentum. I still leave with. I still leave with a broken heart. I still leave with a, with a wounded, a wounded marriage. I still leave with, with a wounded soul. And I came to tell you, come on, out. I feel it on it. Yes, church supposed to be inspirational. Church supposed to be, glory to God, revelational. Church supposed to be relational. But also church ought to be a place of miracles. Y'all ain't loud enough. Church ought to be a place of miracles. Church ought to be a place of miracles, signs and wonders. And I came to tell you, if I please, he can amassi and if I did it, let the man see and do the bohodia. Rika ta na 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 man say ni o shatai. Rika da la 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 basi and da la 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 bohodia. If I don't call nobody out tonight, please don't charge it to me. God is giving me a different agenda tonight. God is giving me a different agenda tonight. He says, "Son, I want somebody to leave here lighter. I want somebody to leave here." Not just with another perspective. I want somebody to leave here knowing you can be healed and your sickness is left on the altar. He said, I want somebody to leave here knowing that God forgives you from the inside out, not from the outside in. I want somebody to know that he's getting ready to do something for you. You don't have to carry you don't have to carry it anymore. What the doctors told you is weighing on you. The conversation you had with your spouse is weighing on you. But here's the prophecy. Since you came to hear the prophet, God said if you get on the altar, if you put your sickness on the altar, if you put your unforgiveness on the altar, if you put your dilemma on the altar, God is going to make sure you don't leave here with it. So this is the greatest moment of your life. He's about to remove your problem. The king is here. And the Lord says, I dare you. Don't worry about your colleagues. Don't worry about who knows you. Whatever you carry it. Some of y'all are carrying years of stuff. I need you to lay on the altar. Come on, I didn't even tell nobody to come. But look at them coming. Because the agenda of heaven is that as the king enters in, Don't worry about those palms. Lay on the altar. 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 Yeah. Release.
release your heavenly language. You don't have to leave here the same. relationship did a number on you but God said if you get on the altar nobody's going to judge you hold on I did not say stand on the altar I said get on the altar I did not say stand on the altar I said get on the altar Get on the altar. Get on the altar. It's all right. Let these people go. Get on the altar. There's some people out there. God says, I can make it better. God says, I can make it better. God says, I can make it better. I don't know who I'm talking to. God says, I can make it better. Come on. God said, I can make it better. God said, I can make it better. God said, he can make it better. Yeah. Yeah. He said he can make it better. Get on the altar. God can make it better. Scream on the altar. God can make it better. I don't know who I'm talking to. Get, get on the altar. Get out of your flesh. God don't want you to leave change. He wants you to leave lighter. God want to make it better. God want to make it better. Y'all let these people know. I don't want nobody touching these people. Let them give God. Let them give God everything. God want to make it better. Make it better. Give it to God right now. Come on. Stop trying to be analytical. Give it to God right now. Come on, cry out to him. Let the tears flow. Let the tears flow. Let the tears flow. You're leaving the lighter. Come on, give it a go. You're leaving the lighter. You're leaving the lighter. Come on, give it a go. Give it a go. Whatever you carry. Come on. Whatever, whatever you carry, there's some more of you. Listen, no walking, no walking, no walking, please, no walking. There's some more of you, God said, come give it to him. You've been carrying. There's a woman all the way in the back. God said, get on the altar, hurry up. All the way in the back. Come here, come here. Come in. All the way in the back. You, woman, get up here. You don't have to carry this alone. Somebody 
have been carrying regret. Get on the altar. Get on the altar. Lift your hands. Get in the spirit and play. Church, tonight, I'm going to say this one time. Please, no walking. Please, 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 please. Let me say this. The reason I'm telling y'all this, yeah, yeah. Thank you. The reason I'm telling you this is because this kind of anointing is very sensitive. These folk don't need no napkins on their eyes. Let them cry. Because when you, if you touch a person prematurely, you can take them out of, out of what God is doing. I see some of y'all tapping them. You don't need to do that. You have to be sensitive to the spirit. Let these people, let these people get into their place. Do you not know it took a lot to get up here and say, I'm carrying something? And some of y'all that's serving need to be up here. But because of your title and your position, you, I just told y'all, I just told him, Bishop, that's what happens. It ain't that God don't make an opportunity for you to be delivered from stuff. Some of y'all don't take the opportunity. So I'm going to make this last appeal. And I'm going to move forward. Everybody look at me. Except the people on the altar. If you are out there and you know without a shadow of a doubt, you are carrying something from your childhood, from your previous relationship. You're carrying something. You literally have a sickness. You take medicine for it. God says on this Palm Sunday, he wants to take that thing away from you. Look at me. I'm going to say this one last time. If that is you, and you are not on this altar, get up here right now. Right now. Right now. Right now. God says come. God says come. God said it. 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 Now we're about to pray. The Lord says, you're about to call that thing out. There's going to be some deep deliverance. Some of you carrying the thought that you're not forgiven by your family. You're about to call that thing out. All right? You're going to call it out. If you're dealing with high blood pressure, you're going to call it out. 
if you're dealing with pornography, you're going to call that spirit out. If you're dealing with rejection, you're going to call that thing out. If you're feeling as if you're, you're not enough, you're going to call that thing out. And I want to tell somebody, there's a woman in here right now. God told me to tell you, you are more than enough. But I need you to stay hiding. It's not that God is developing you. He's developing who's coming to get you. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. God says, we're about to call it out. And this is going to turn into a deliverance moment. When you call it out, you need to have confidence that it's leaving you. Even if you don't know how it's leaving. For some of you, it's going to come out in your tears. For others, it's going to come out in your holler. For others, it's going to come out in your clapping. But God said it's about to come out. And once you start to renounce it, don't stop renouncing it until you feel lighter. If you're ready, close your eyes really tight. Two young ladies, y'all come get in the red, in the blue, y'all come get a mic. Get a mic. Come, come over here with them. Come get a mic. This is going to be some warfare. Close your eyes really tight. Really tight, really tight. Really tight. Now, while this is taking place, please look at me. I don't want nobody moving. I want everybody praying deep. For those of you that are standing, I take it you are the elders, the missionaries, and all of that. If I tell you to go sit down, it's because I don't feel you're consecrated. I don't feel you you have a prayer life. Some of you, I don't feel prayer on you. So if I tell you to move around, just move around. So your, your job is to pray in the Holy Ghost. I don't want y'all touching none of these people. Your job is to pray in the Holy Ghost. God, free them from this. Close your eyes real tight. I want all the elders and the missionaries to hold your hand out like this over the people. Your job is to pray in the Spirit. Everybody in here standing on your feet, hurry up. Hurry up. Hurry up. And point your hands toward the altar. And when I say pray in the Holy Spirit, you are going to pray and you're not going to stop. In this section over here, Spirit of the Lord says, if I elevate your businesses, how would you pray in the Holy Spirit? Everybody on the altar, God is commanding you to start to ask God to get rid of what's in you, get rid of what you've been holding. When I count to three, I want this whole house to erupt in prayer. One, two, three. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Rata, the man show, Ruti the Hesha, Randili Masia. I want y'all to get the mic and begin to get the mic and begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Ritili Bari Rohusha, Randili Masatara Bahaya, Randili Makota Bashia, Vapa Dili Moku. Come on, pray in the Holy Ghost. Ritatara Bashi. In the name of Jesus. Pray in the Holy Ghost. 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 Pray. Oh, it's falling off of you. It's falling off of you. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost, release your heavenly 
this house. Father, 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 we come to you now. We claim the victory. We claim dominion. We claim power. Power to change our mind. Power to change our soul. to get louder. Get louder. I heard the Lord say it's coming off of you. The Lord said, if you pray louder right now, it's being removed off of you. It's being removed off of you. It's being removed off of you.
Everybody here got something you need God to take. So everybody say, take it. Take it away. I want to hear the church. Come on. Everybody, loud as you can. Take it away. Please close your eyes and say it. Take it away. Take it away. Take it away. This is my prayer. Jesus, please take it away. Jesus. Take it away. 
Say Jesus. Jesus, take it away. Everybody say Jesus. Jesus, please take it away. Everybody say Jesus. One last time, Jesus, please. Jesus, please. Whole house. Take it away. Now you clap like you're free right now. I said clap like you're free. Okay, that ain't good enough. Thank him like you're free. Thank him. Brother Flowers, thank him like you're free. Thank him like you're free. Thank him like he has taken your burden. Thank him like he's carried your burden. Thank him like you're free. Come on, give him thanks. Thank him for what he's done for you tonight. Thank him for what he's done for you tonight. You ain't got to cry no more. You ain't got to cry no more. You ain't got to cry no more. I'm going to say this to you and I hope you get it. And when I say it, you better holler. God. Just done it again. I said, God. Now, I dare you thank him like he's done it again. Well done. Uh-oh. I don't care about who walked out of the church. I don't care about who left. I'm not here for who's leaving. I'm here for who want to thank them for doing it again. When I think about it, I realize that every round go higher and higher. And the Lord told me to tell you, it's about to get better than you ever could imagine. I said, look at somebody and say, neighbor, it's about to get better than you ever could imagine. Yes, you cried. Yes, you went through it. But do you know what my coming out look like? I'm coming out. Matter of fact, screaming because I left it on the altar. I got a question. Have anybody left it on the altar? I said, did you leave it? I said, did you leave it on the altar? have a sound it has a dance I said freedom don't just have a new sound 
freedom have a dance and some of y'all now that you're free you ought not dance the same you used to dance y'all ain't loud enough I prophesy to every person that's in here and when I say this I need you to holler whatever you left on the altar will never return to your life Somebody should have took off running. I said just in case the devil didn't know, whatever you left on the altar will never run up to somebody and tell them whatever you left on the altar will never return to your life. a good spot you bet not run like that sister the devil the devil told you you were supposed to carry this for the rest of your life but God said now that it's off of your life you about to praise on a whole nother level now here's the thing, here's the thing. Everybody look at me, say, talk to me, prophet. God said, now that it's off of your life, you cannot dance in the same space you danced in before it left. I'm giving you 30 seconds to run to an area of the church. Matter of fact, God says, what you left on the altar, you are now about to dance on its head. I need about 17 people that ain't scared to dance on your past to run up to the altar and give God a 30-second praise. Get up here. You better dance 
might as well have a church. Sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down. We're done. We're done. God bless you. Very quickly, listen, I want to do this as quick as we can. God is real. Somebody say, God is real. I want you to do this, please. I want every person under the sound of my voice to grab a hundred dollar seed. Get it quickly. I'm, I'm, I'm not, I'm not finna give you some appeal. I want you to grab a hundred dollar seed. And I want you to stand. Quickly. Quickly. Listen to the prophet. Grab a hundred dollar seed. Then stand. Quickly, grab a hundred dollar seed and stand. Quickly, grab a hundred dollar seed and stand. That is every person in here. Now, anybody that knows, if you're watching me online want you to agree with us tonight God did something phenomenal because we are not just different we are lighter because we no longer carry the baggage we had when we came in here somebody watching me out there in media world you feel like you've left something on the altar too. I want you to release a seed of $100 in this house tonight. Everybody, quickly, release that seed. I understand that when the prophet operates in prophecy, 
I call people out. We sometimes give more when we get a word. But here is the doxology of it. If you really knew how worthy leaving what you've been carrying on the altar is, that is worth more than somebody calling me out by my name. Because somebody is getting prophecy and still going home with a messed up heart. So, I, I, listen, don't stone me because I was led to preach hard and to do what we very seldom do, open up the altar. Don't stone me. It ain't that I ain't been praying. It's actually I've been praying. And one of the key factors, Bishop, in being a prophet is being able to obey God more than man. And I choose to obey God. It, I, 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 right now, I can call somebody out, prophesy to you throughout your entire life. You get emotional. You're going to sow whatever I tell you to sow because I walk in that authority. Say Amen. What happens when God wants to be the predominant figure? And what we're giving is just a response to what took place tonight. That's it. Everybody grab a hundred dollar CD. Bishop, and y'all may not believe this, and I can say this about the bishop. Bishop is so integral, and he holds me accountable. I'd be ready to fight, fuss, kick. Ain't that right, Bishop? And Bishop say, he say, boy, stop. That ain't the way. You all right. You going to be good. People do me wrong. He said, what happened to the scripture? Turn the other cheek. That's the kind of pastor you have. He holds us accountable. He holds me accountable to having the bar as a prophet high as possible. High. So that whenever I grab the mic, I am a trusted voice. Not, see, some people are gifted voices. But every gifted voice ain't a trusted voice. And so let me, let me say this to everybody that's watching me across the country. Favor that's on my life ain't just because of Bishop. It's because what happens with maturity is you don't just become a gifted voice. You become a trusted voice. If anybody wondering how prophet is traveling all over the country, God uses man. But why are they bringing them back? Because I'm no longer a gifted voice. I'm a trusted voice. And you can't hate on who God trusts. Hello? I said, you can't hate on who God trusts. It's a dangerous thing to put your mouth on who God trusts. Put your mouth on who's gifted. But you can't put your mouth on who God. I just want to clear that up to the brethren. And the sister in, and the wrens, and whoever. <laughs> all right, all right, that's right. Lip, I want you right now, everybody. What, and what they get? Young lady, lift your hands to Jesus. Ah, I, I now. God. Elevate you. All right? This won't be the last we hear of you, see of you. Your best days is coming. Please, lift that seed up in the air. Tonight was powerful. It really was. Wasn't the night powerful? It was powerful. Sometimes, sometimes God just want to go his way. Say amen. Everybody, whatever you're giving, stand to your feet, please. Whatever you're giving.
done to your feet. Please. Everybody. Whatever you're giving, extend to your feet. Hold it high in the air. Hold it high in the air. Congratulations, woman God. On your on, on your little, your licenses and your stuff. Y'all clap your hands. Uh -huh. Good to see her husband. God bless you, man of God. Good to see you, young lady. I ain't seen you in years. Girl, you looking good. God bless you. Look at y'all got tight, man of God. Can't tell somebody looking good. Y'all need to get saved, man. Hold your seat in the air. Repeat after me. I love God so much. I love God so much. I love God so much. And I refuse to disappoint God. Repeat after me. Because my giving matters. I believe God. For jobs. Better jobs. Raises. Bonuses. Gifts. Surprises. Finding money. Bills paid off. Blessings. And increase. Come here, come here, come here, come here, hurry up. I lay my hands on you. God is finna do a work in your life. You hear me? Yeah, God's finna do a work in your life. My prayer for you, young lady, is that some of the ways you have, that you would change them quickly. Ah! God told me, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's going to do a quick work in your life. Quick work in your life. Clap for her. Clap for her. Clap. Everybody quickly. Everybody that takes a palm home today, tonight, don't throw it away right away. Okay? Don't throw it away. These palms are going to be symbolic that what you laid on the altar will never return. Every time you look at it, it's going to be a reminder that you are free. Somebody say, I'm free. Quickly, as quick as you can, everybody come and lay your seed in the bucket. Just come from everywhere. Just come from everywhere. Everybody come in quick. Come in quick. Come in quick. Quickly, quickly, quickly into the hands of the greatest leader on this side of heaven. Praise the Lord. Come on, let's give God some thanks. Hallelujah. Wow. Get one of the palm leaves that's left. We had several down this morning. I think they brought some over from north. Please feel free to do that. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Who wants to join church tonight? Anybody want to join church tonight? Bishop, I came to unite with this ministry tonight. I want to join GCT. I want to join this ministry. I invite you. If you're here, if there's one, thank you again for watching us online. Thank you so much. Like and share. Thank you for sewing with us as well. Those of you that are watching, you'll see those opportunities. Thank you. Anybody else? Come get one of these leaves for your neighbor. Amen. Get one from your mom, for your mama, for your sister, your brother. Get this grass up off this thing. Here. Amen. Praise God. I said, Cheryl, come get some more. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on, come on, come on. Wow. That's it, son. Take it back to the to uh, elementary school. Take them back. Take Get one for your teacher. Take one to your teacher. Don't bring no apples. Go take a palm leaf. Amen. God is good. Braxton, come get a palm leaf. Come get a palm leaf. Come get a palm leaf. Get one. Come get a palm leaf. Come on. Follow him. Yeah. 
That's right. That's right. Let me get a palm leaf. Mother Freda, hey love, good to see you. Amen. Dr. Moore, good to see you, man. Thank you all. Y'all ready? I'm going to tell you, this prophet is anointed. Um, and he was so true. The reason he has come back is because he's trusted. And he receives data from leadership. Thank you. I knew God. I see God on him more now, Cheryl. You know why? Because I said, I don't want to be in here after 10 o'clock, no 11 o'clock. Because in Jackson, we're in church almost midnight. I said, Lord, do another thing on him tonight. Amen. I'm tired. Amen. Amen. Let's stand, but God is good. Okay, I told y'all to get y'all stuff off the altar. Take it home with you. Amen. Who else? Braxton, you're not going to get your palm leaf? She ain't coming. Amen. That's it. Take one home. Some of y'all left three things on the altar. You can get one for everything you left. Braxton, here, come get yours. Come get it. Come get it. Come on. Come on. Come on. Really? I'm going to need you to. I'm going to loose that spirit off of you. You're a porter. You ain't going to be shot. Get that to your mama. Amen. Can we go? Let's go to the Lord. My cousin is here, Pastor Carlos Rogers. Come on up here and dismiss us tonight, sir. Up in this, I like this new outfit you got on. I'm gonna I'm go shopping with you. Let I can, y'all gonna let me dress like this one Sunday. Amen. We're praying for his father, Bishop Carlos Rogers, as well. Keep him in prayer alike. Amen. Father, we thank you for everything our eyes have seen. We thank you for everything our ears have heard. We thank you for the sweet presence of the Holy Ghost. Father, let it rest root in the Bible of both now and ever. In Jesus' name, every heart said, thank God. Amen. Amen. break is quickly approaching and for our children three months of no school is on the horizon. So many opportunities lie in store for them. Working part-time jobs, venturing out to amusement parks, hanging out with friends for hours on end, the world is their oyster. Even in 2024, COVID-19 is still prevalent. As we prepare our children for the summer, let's make sure that they are vaccinated against the virus so mom, dad, and the kids can stay safe this summer. Get back Tennessee. For more information on where you can find vaccination and booster sites in your area, visit communityprojectinc.org. This project is funded under a grant contract with the state of Tennessee. Temperatures up, wheels up, time to travel. Whether you're catching a flight out of the country on business or you're taking a road trip across the country with the family, traveling is not a contactless sport. In all our traveling, let's be mindful of one another. While we're booking those flights, COVID-19 is still among us. Let's plan to be safe this spring. Get packed, get relaxed, get Vax Tennessee. For more information on where you can find vaccination and booster sites in your area, visit communityprojectinc.org.